Hey, hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of Business Resilience in the New Normal. This is episode number six. So if you haven't watched the previous episodes, please make sure to go back and watch this again. So let me introduce you to myself. You are not time to, if you don't know who I am, my name is Fayola Fongyang and I'm the founder of Free Colors Wolf. I'm a brand strategist. People know me for different things, podcasts, speaking, speaking engagement, a lot of things. But today it's not about me, it's about something else. We're going to be talking about data protection and so much more GDPR. And with me, I have Michael Abta, the founder and CEO of RG Smart, another great client of mine. Mike, how are you? Very well, Flavilla. I'm pleased to be joining you on this, this podcast. Yes, but people, people don't know you. Can you introduce yourself in a few minutes? Yep. Yeah, um, very briefly, I'm Michael Abta. I'm, I would say, firstly, proud husband and father of two children. Um, I'm the founder of IG Smart. We've been established for 11 years now. Um, our specialism is data privacy and, and security and information governance. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with global organizations as well as lots of organizations within the UK, um, Department of Health, NHS, Yale Limited, Nectar, through to very kind of small operations and small startup companies mm. and helping them overcome their complex data protection and, and yes. cyber security challenges. Yes, and I think the situation that we are in right now, nobody was prepared for it. And especially when it comes to data, not all are working remotely. So it's even further more importance of knowing how to protect that data because people probably haven't all moved into the cloud, but you must be busy trying to help people, advise people in terms of, of that new nature, new matter. Yes, it's been, yeah, I think twofold. Um, one, obviously, the majority of us are, are working remotely now, um, and that's new for some, um, and there's lots of considerations around gaining access securely um, to data and kind of the privacy considerations around working remotely and the different platforms that are available and and we've seen you know lots of um kind of issues and incidents with some of the platforms that are being used so and yes. um, that's been something we've been doing but also specifically helping organizations develop um platforms and applications that are actually geared towards um combating uh covid19 to kind of contract tracing and, and tracking type applications so we've been involved in a few covid specific projects and a lot of our clients are kind of frontline health and social care organizations that are deeply impacted by this oh, interesting so that leads me to my first question what should companies prepare them no how should companies prepare themselves during and after the lockdown i think first and foremost if if if, if this has shown one thing. I mean, for, for the past, for many years, I've always been surprised by, by how few organizations actually have kind of documented business continuity and disaster mm. recovery plans in place that are actually tested. Mm. Um, and it certainly has put organizations to the test. So I think those that don't have a kind of formalized, documented approach towards how they're going to enable access to, to, to information what they're going to do in the event that employees you know can't get into the office or if they're unwell and they're unable to work Correct. having plan a b and c that is is tested um and safeguards in place for um various eventualities you know mm -hmm. COVID is is one example but it, it could be a uh, you know it could be a cyber attack it could be a terror attack it could be industrial action um, incidents and disasters are an inevitability and um, so really I think preparing um, and ensuring that organizations kind of fine-tune their processes off the back of this is going to be important. Yes definitely but and I think that's exactly that people don't have a crisis plan or crisis strategy and I was discussing that as well with you know previous you know episodes that we had have been doing and something people haven't tested they haven't put in place for us, for example, we've always been either working here or working in here, you know, working remotely. It's always been the, you know, the flexibility that I've offered because it's part of the culture, but not all especially think about a bigger organization don't necessarily have that in place. And I think people always don't think about the worst, but sometimes as part of an organization, especially now, you need to think about the worst because as we know, 
nothing is certain that we're going to come out of this in the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months or until next year. And again, we don't still don't see the impact, the long-term impact that we're still waiting to um, deal with it. So yes, yeah, so very good point on that. My next question leads me to how, they, how can they improve and maintain business continuity whether or not we are hit by another peak? I think that's one thing is I think you kind of ex you, you explain this in your message and then make sure that we have a plan, but also test it. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Um, I think, yeah, it, it really is, uh, you know, I think one of the things this has done for, for m many organizations that perhaps weren't um, kind of in, in the habit of working remotely is it's shown that actually this can actually be a bit more productive, you know, it can be something yeah. that's cost effective. Um, so I think we can assume that at least for the foreseeable future, this is going to be a threat. So I think continuing to, you know, enable remote ways of working um, and ensuring security of, and accessibility of data, uh, you know, cloud-based solutions, cloud, cloud um, systems are, are, I think, you know, it, things were already heading in that direction with kind of yes. digital transformation agendas. I think that's going to become a new norm in many instances. And yes. then where businesses have got no choice other than to, for their employees to return to work, mm -hmm. then there are considerations around how do you do that safely? Um, and there's a necessity to process very sensitive data about people's health, specifically, you know, their COVID-19 status. Yes to know whether or not it is in fact safe to, to get them back into the workplace. So mm -hmm. um, some of the organizations we're working with are giving uh, consideration and implementing solutions like thermal imaging yes. to check people's temperatures before they enter into the workplace um, and using things like contact tracing apps. So, mm -hmm. um, but there are significant consider uh, considerations for data protection and privacy. Yes. And, it needs to be proportionate and also it needs to be uh, clinically safe and effective. So um, that, that is an area that I think is, is we're seeing a lot more activity um, and issues and, and concerns coming from, from clients. Good, 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 good. Good answer. And that's a good point. I wanted to also ask you a question with regards to um, people, you know, now people working remotely in terms of data protection. Do you have any general advice or people maybe are not yet you know should pay attention to in terms of security yeah in terms of security I, I i think because you're working remotely primarily um people will be relying on the cloud um and there's lots of security considerations with with cloud-based computing yeah. um some of the very basic things that organizations need to do include you know having a strong password um ensuring that in terms of whatever solution you're, you're using, you follow the best practice guidelines for those particular yeah. solutions. Um, if for, just as an example, not picking on any particular brand, but we use Office 365, um, and there's kind of basic packages, but then more advanced level um, enhanced security, mm -hmm. data loss prevention, advanced threat protection, things like that that help you know, by encrypting and ensuring that data is more secure. Yes. are features that businesses should should ensure they have um, encrypting data at rest and in transit if people have on-site kind of servers and networks that they need to access that should be through some kind of virtual private network yeah um, enabling multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. um, which is what typically you know you may get a text or code sent to your phone that you have to um, input into a system before you can gain access in addition to your password. Yes. And staff training and awareness is probably fundamentally one of the most important things in terms mm -hmm. of the more aware people are about cybersecurity attacks, the, the less likely they are to, to, to occur. And it's so um, easy to open an email and say, hey, I have an order for you. No, it's yeah. not an order. I mean, yeah, I mean, where people are, you know, conscious of the fact that opening emails and, and clicking on links can be a risk, mm -hmm. but cyber, you know, criminals are very sophisticated. Now, mm -hmm. even just by hovering on a link or an attachment is enough for kind of malicious code to be embedded. Mm -hmm. and, and doing your homework on the, the, the chosen solutions you have and your due, due diligence on 
who that, that third party um, supplier is, 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 is critical. Many will, you know, will say yeah. in a basics around we're, we're GDPR compliant, we, you know, we have privacy controls in place, yeah. but how do you actually know that without, you know, testing it? Yes, I know that you do training. Is that something, a training that you also provide remotely? Yes, we do um, a, a lot more remotely um, nowadays, um, whereas before it was kind of both classroom based and, and remote training. But we do training for executives, um, kind of high level training around cyber security, cyber res resilience, um, business yes. continuity, um, and data privacy predominantly but also for, for employees. Um, and, and that sometimes is, you know, tailored to specific clients needs, but also kind of off the shelf training packages, mm. um, for, you know, for remote working and some of the basic things that people need to do. Good. And so that leads me to the next question. How have you helped your clients through this? Um, there've been kind of basic questions around, you know, can we use this tool for mm -hmm. video conferencing or to store our data? Um, through to more complex things like developing, um, as yeah. I mentioned before, kind of COVID-19 um, softwares and technologies, mm -hmm. um, through to, uh, you, you mentioned training before, through to kind of helping organizations with training. We've seen more interest and growth now around kind of startups that are trying to develop new digital products or mm -hmm. e-commerce platforms um with that being again the direction of travel so it, yes. it's been really quite varied good 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 i like how you 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 know how to adjust to a different situation and, and as as we know every company you know protection issues are very different so in terms of businesses in general what do you think they can learn post covid19 you know i think again this is a session you know session on the new normal what do you think they can learn post covid19 I think we've really touched on many of the points, but I think yes. ultimately, I think the key thing is, you know, for, for business is productivity. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, can people be productive and effective working from home? And in some, you know, in some cases, I'm sure some companies have had some great success stories. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a better work-life balance for your employees and they're happier. Yeah. They'll, they'll likely, you know, commit and dedicate themselves more to, to working. But I think also importantly, it's, it is the need to be very lean and agile as a business um, and be prepared to adapt to, to suit the environment in which you're working. Totally. I think this is so important. And I think the companies that will thrive with this, uh, the, the recession that is coming uh, will be the ones that have been able to adapt very quickly. So you made some really good valid points. Next question is very much about you as a business. How have you been coming with the situation? What have you put in place that people can learn from? Um, we, I think prior to this, kind of 95% of our work was already remote. So, yeah. you know, we the kind of communications and systems in place that we, we needed. Mm -hmm. um, I've had to, to cancel a few international projects that would have involved travel. Travel, oh, yes. With the physical security audits we we do we've had to put put those on the back burner mm -hmm. but other than that it for us it's been um business as as, as usual mm -hmm. um really it's been around how how we can best um you know use our skill sets to to serve our clients yes. um to help them with the, the challenges that they're facing um mm -hmm. and it, undoubtedly i think for some it's been the most challenging time ever Mm hmm absolutely i mean thinking about companies who i mean everybody in my office have, they all have laptops but imagine if you provide people only pc desk and you know, you know so what do we do you everybody has to carry the massive i mean it's a lot of things that you know it's a lot of um forward thinking people need to have after this this period and as you say the ability to just maintain productivity no matter what happens is yeah. definitely make a difference um, so then, so last question, what did you learn working with Three Colors Rule? <laughs> working with Three Colors Rule has been fantastic. Um, I think one of the key things was, uh, and, and you in particular, Philip Villa, kind of helped me to look at how we can productize um, some of our service offerings mm -hmm. to make them more accessible um, to the end user. Mm -hmm. it, you know, what we do is very complex. 
Um, so how, how we convey that message in a, in a creative way in order to, yeah. to market our services um, is, is key for us and, and you were very instrumental in helping us achieve that. Um, and I think really what I've been really impressed by is, is you going above and beyond. You know, you've been very proactive in, in helping us to actually you know network with with potential clients and customers and yes. kind of make introductions for us so um that's been fantastic well i'm very grateful you know i take a lot of it takes me a lot of time to just choose the right clients so if i can help i will always try to do so so that's a pleasure and it's a very natural thing for me to do so if people want to get in touch with you what's the best way to do so or if you have anything to offer uh, best way i mean like everybody probably I'm I'm on I'm on LinkedIn, my yes. collab. I'm always open for kind of conversation, sharing ideas and, and learning from, from others. Mm -hmm. Um otherwise um through our, our website um ww.ig yes. um, com um but an email really michael at ig hyphen um smart dot com. Happy to to um as I said share ideas and learn from yes. others. And I really advise you people to, to call uh, or even email Michael because he's really, really helpful and very knowledgeable. And for me, if you are interested, we are also happy to offer you a free burn assessment. Again, just visit freecolorsville.com and you can schedule a time that pleases you. And I hope that you enjoyed the session as more to come. So if you want to stay in touch obviously with me, you can find me on most social platforms. And I really hope that you enjoyed the session. Thank you so much, Michael, for doing this with us. Thank you, Flavilla, and I look forward to watching more of these sessions. Yes. Thank you, guys. Bye.